What's up guys, welcome back to JSIC Poker, uh, where I give you guys weekly tips, tricks, and strategies on everything PLO. If you guys want to learn how to play PLO or want to get better, please hit that like and subscribe button. Um, and if you also want to find a club to play in, uh, go ahead and DM me on Instagram at Acoustic Shredder. It's a really fun club. They got PLO, low stakes to high stakes. Um, there's no sort of cash out uh, rules or anything like that. Rake is pretty low as well. So definitely uh, let me know. Games are pretty good. All right. Um, but right now I'm going to go over the four most common pre-flop mistakes to avoid in PLO in order to help maximize your guys' winnings on the felt. Now let's get into it. Uh, the first pre-flop mistake that most beginners make when playing PLO is they see too many flops with bad hands. What are considered bad hands in PLO? Well, it obviously depends on the position, but let's say villain races from under the gun and we have a ace, 10, eight, six single suited on the button without a nut suit. <clears throat> Right, if it's a 10 eye suit, a lot of people will call this because it's connected and suited, plus they have an ace, so it must be strong, right? Wrong. This hand was has very poor equity versus most proper opening ranges because it often faces future and pre-flop domination. A lot of times when early position opens, they're gonna have hands like ace, ace, king, queen, ace, king, jack, 10, single suited, king, king, 10, nine, ace, queen, jack, five, a lot of premium hands that just dominate us. So not only do these hands dominate us in terms of connectivity, but also through a suitedness and nuttiness, right? So let's say we do call and gamble a little bit with our ace 10, eight, six. Oftentimes we're gonna flop some sort of straight draw or flush draw, and we're not even gonna know if those are good if we hit, right? So it's just gonna get you a lot of trouble. For example, let's say we do make a loose call and the flop comes king, queen eight uh, with spades right now we have a gut shot plus an eight uh, with the flush draw it looks pretty good right in in no limit that would be a pretty good hand um, but unfortunately a high percentage of the time the villain is going to continue on this board because his opening range is going to have a significant range advantage uh, but we may not even be good versus hands like ace queen jack five ace king queen ten ten jack queen nine with spades or king, king, jack, 10, right? With a top set and a spade draw or a straight draw. <clears throat> and continue with our hand is gonna get us into a ton of trouble the majority of the time, plus, you know, um, leaking tons of money. So you really wanna make sure you have at least a nut suit with connectivity when flatting preflop with ace x hands. For example, you wanna be calling more often with hands like ace, jack, nine, 10, ace, five, six, seven, single suited, Ace, eight, nine, jack, single suited. Ace, queen, jack, eight, single suited. Even uh, mixing in some pots or three bets with double suited hands, right? Now, it's gonna be a lot easier to continue with these because along with your straight draw, two pair, pair or straight, you're gonna have a nut flush draw to, to go with it. So you know you're gonna always gonna be drawing to the nuts. All right, guys, so please don't make that mistake. Now, the second pre-flop mistake most beginners make when playing PLO is they don't raise enough from later position. <clears throat> Guys, one of the best ways to make money in PLO is by being aggressive and seeing flops in position versus weaker opponents and weaker ranges. This is gonna allow you to take down a ton of dead money and it's also gonna frustrate your opponents. For example, I really like to start opening up my um, range from the hijack, cutoff, and button, and I'll start to raise hands like ace, 10, 10, nine, single suited. Five five six seven single suited eight eight nine ten queen queen four five jack jack nine seven single suited and the reason is because all these hands are connected and play well on future streets especially when you're playing heads up in position even if you're out of position um, a lot of times you can represent uh, you know strong hands like aces or kings on uh, boards that where you should have the proper range advantage. Uh, plus, you're also going to hold a lot of good future blockers, like the ace-x, right? Or pairs like jacks, queens, to possibly represent future straights. So it's going to allow you to barrel, as well as to raise bluff versus bets. You know, let's say if the straight does get there. For example, guys, let's say we open on the button with 8867 single suited. Or offsuit even, I would open that. And the big blind calls and the flop comes jack 710 offsuit. 
and the big blind checks to us. Now it's very unlikely that our opponent has eight nine here because we have two eights in our hand. So this is gonna be a very good opportunity for us to barrel two to potentially three streets, straight, uh, streets if nothing changes. He's gonna be forced to fold a lot of one pair, two pair, um, and potentially draws like open-ended or gut shots uh, if we bomb the turn. But that is why I love opening these types of hands in position. All right, now the third preflop mistake that most beginners make is they open way too wide from out of position in loose games. Guys, especially if you're playing in a live game, uh, when you open from early position, a ton of people are gonna call in order just to see a flop. And that's going to leave you in a very, very bad and vulnerable vulnerable position. Just imagine, you're going to be playing up against anywhere from 8 to 32 other cards. Your odds don't really look good at that point. Um, if nobody is folding in front of you, then you really need to tighten up your opening range to really nutted hands like Ace-8-9, eight, nine, Ace-8-9 eight, eight, single suited, Ace-King-Jack-9, Queen-Jack-10-9, Queen-Queen-10-10, ten, ten, strong rundowns, or strong over pairs with connectivity. And especially in these games, you're gonna to wanna to have a limp re-raising range and limping range with hands that can still possibly dominate other hands like, like ace, five, six, single suited, king, king, five, six, queens, jacks, right, that are connected. And if you're short stack, then you should definitely have a limp re-raising range, which is primarily gonna be aces or very strong kings like king, king, queen, queen, king, king, jack, 10, ace, king, king, five, single suited, because this is gonna get, allow you to get most of the people, most of the money pre-flop, and then be able to profitably jam a lot of flops, right? So just for example, let's say you limp in with ace, five, six, single suited from early position in a very loose game. Normally, I would not limp this, right, GTO-wise, but if it's a very loose game with a ton of players, calling everything pre-flop, it's gonna be a profitable call because a lot of people are gonna have weaker uh, flush draws and oftentimes you're gonna dominate those hands and if you flop a nut flush, you can easily cooler a worse flush. Uh, but just to give you guys an example of this, let's say you limp in and the flop comes four, five, 10, uh, two spades. So you flop bottom pair with an open-ended with a nut flush draw. <clears throat> if the stack to pot ratio is right, you can easily just pot or check jam this flop, and then you're gonna be up against a lot of over pairs with flush draws or weaker flush draws. Hands like king, king, queen, jack, single suited. Ace, king, queen, jack with, with spades that you completely obliterate. Queens with spades, jacks with spades. This is a big mistake that a lot of beginners make. And you know all your outs, not only are your outs gonna be live, but you're gonna be a, a huge favorite versus uh, the majority of those hands. All right, you guys, so, uh, you know, think definitely think about doing that in a loose game. <clears throat> now, the fourth most common pre-flop mistake beginners make is they don't three bet enough pre-flop. A lot of beginners are going to experience getting called by multiple people pre-flop, so they're going to be afraid to three bet and put a lot of money in with premium hands. But the reality is that you have to take advantage of these hands and gamble it up a little bit and put some money in before the flop in order to get maximum, maximum value by dominating worse hands. For example, let's say middle position opens, gets three callers and you're in the small blind with ace, ace, five, six, single suited. A lot of inexperienced players or conservative players would just flat this pre-flop because they're afraid they're gonna miss the flop and then be up against four other players, right? But GTO wise, this hand is a slam dunk three bet and you are winning a ton of money in the long run, much more than flatting. Um, now for the second example, let's say middle position opens and has shown some aggression. You have ace jack nine ten single suit on the button. A lot of people would just flat this because after all it's a nice hand on the button, it's connected with the nut suit and they're gonna wanna see a flop multi-way. This is definitely a three bet, especially versus later positions because you're most likely ahead of um, their range. They can have a lot of hands you dominate, like seven, eight, nine, 10, single suited, eight, nine, 10, jack, king, queen, jack, 10, right, with lower suits. 
So bloating this pot in position preflop is gonna make you a lot of money because you're now gonna be heads up with the, with the aggression, aggressive lead and you're gonna dominate a lot of middle position and late positions ranges. Plus a lot of players tend to make mistakes calling too wide preflop and not playing well enough out of position on the flop. Okay guys, so just to conclude, you know, I promise if you guys work on and implement these preflop strategies, you're gonna have the opportunity to make way more, especially if you're running hot or if you're playing in a very, very loose game. Obviously guys, you're not gonna hit every flop and not every pot's gonna go your way, which is why I'll be coming out with the most common mistakes players make post-flop real soon, so be on the lookout for that. But if you guys found this uh, video valuable and helpful for your pre-flop game and PLO, and if you think it's gonna help you make more money in the felt, please hit that like and subscribe button for more PLO tips, tricks, and strategies. And until the next one, peace out, you guys.